Now, I see that there are two kinds of creative software updates, the ones that add features and the ones that change behavior. Comfy UI's new template library is the second kind. Templates sound basic, almost boring, but in generative AI workflows, templates are really the new UX, the new user experience. They reduce setup time, they standardize best practices and make advanced techniques accessible without flattening the tool into a single button. Comfy UI's updated templates focus on creative ideas and tasks, real tasks, not just look at what this model can do. This is an important update and it's an important indication of the direction that Comfy UI is taking. Now, I believe that there are four types of users for Comfy UI and they exist in these sort of factions or clans that don't really know that the other exists. Some people at one extreme end are the zero install heroes. These are the people who really do not want to spend a lot of time installing software and managing models. They just want to get things done. And they usually spend a lot of time on the web using browser apps. But once they discover Comfy UI, the creativity and the control becomes addictive. At the other end, there are the people I call the uh, the VRAM Viscounts. These people have enormous capacities, lots of VRAM. They've got the RTX 6000 running, a NAS drive with 99 terabytes of SSD storage. They can run things locally. They can archive ho hordes of models. And there's a lot of people in between. And what this new update to Comfy UI does is that it serves everyone. It allows everyone to get something of what they want. Now, a lot of these features have been available already, but they're now organized in a way that makes them so much easier to understand and to access. So you've got templates which don't just open up new workflows. They show you what's available in terms of models. Some of the models are going to be running locally. You can download them and use them locally. Some of them are partner models. They will run remotely on APIs. And you can see just how easy it is to find whatever it is you're looking for. If we go to the video tab, uh, we can see a range of videos. Now, I used to be a huge fan of the runway contests where creators would create all sorts of wonderful little movies using very basic technology. Now, most of these models actually show you content which is way better than what you could get with the best models just a year ago. And these are all available inside of Comfy UI. The user interface allows you to see what's available and also to play around with it. So for instance, if we want to, we can see Kandinsky, we can see Kling, we can see One, and there, there are image to video, there is text to video, and sometimes you've got these screens that allow you to see the difference between before and after. So this is obviously a video to video operation, and we can see the before, and the man changes to a dog, and does his stunt. As well as these traditional models that you can run inside of Comfy UI, the open source models, there are now apps like Sora. So there's an opportunity to install Sora and to start using Sora. We've got a lot of models here and there's a lot of choice. And the choice is a part of what makes Comfy UI really, really impressive as a tool for creation. Comfy UI appeals to people who are very technical and it appeals to people also who are very creative. Now, I'm just kind of wondering from your point of view, do you, do you use Comfy UI more because it gives you technical control or because it gives you creative freedom? Let me know in the comments. As well as video, we've got audio. So this is including Stability AI's text to audio, audio to audio, which is actually quite good sometimes. The text to audio can be a little bit but the audio to audio can really produce some awesome results. 
audio in painting and there there is also ace step uh, you definitely want to check these out you can actually play them inside of the templates library there are also 3d models this is a very new kind of industry and it's one which i think is going to probably improve tremendously over the next few years large language models including OpenAI and Google Gemini. I wish there were a little bit more of those. I, I really, <laughs> I use these a lot. I saw my chat GPT year review and when it showed how many messages I'd sent, it was kind of incredible. I couldn't quite believe how much, how much chatting I've done with that chat GPT. So you can see the models are organized in different ways. One really interesting feature is the use cases which allows you to see different use cases. And this allows you to see, for instance, techniques that you can use in a commercial setting like magazine cover and package design. You can see here applying texture to logos and you can see multi-keyframe multi video stitching. So that's one way of organizing it. We can also look at the traditional methods we can see the image to uh we can see the image creation options here and you can see here we've got some control nets from z image turbo and we've also got fashion bill billboard generator so the workflows cover a huge range of options product mock-up from flux 2 this powerful really really powerful new model from black forest and if we want to we can also go and choose the models by the different houses so black forest labs we've got these models here we've got the flux models flux dev fp8 so you can see this supports a huge number of different use cases and there are people who can use these who've got very limited equipment and there are people who can use these who've got very powerful equipment. We've got the stable diffusion. Uh, we've got the stability AI models as well. If you want to run those, we've got stability and these in increase the number of options that we've got. So here from stability and also from Black Forest, I think we're showing 35 templates in total that we can use. Some of these are pretty cool. I think Stable Diffusion 3.5 is still one of my favorites, but obviously a lot of people like the Flux models. Another way we can sort is by where it runs. Is it running externally or running on Comfy UI? And by this they mean, is it running uh, on a model that has been downloaded and is being used locally, or is it running on an external or remote remote API. Now, if we take a look at all the templates, you can see that the number is huge. And I'm going to just release the models. Let's go ahead and select templates, models, and turn off the different companies. And the number of different organizations represented here includes ByteDance, Flux, and by flux obviously is meant BFL, Black Forest. We've got GPT 1.5, Gemini, including Gemini Pro image preview. We've got Kling, we've got Luma, Nano Banana Pro. So all of the big names are showing up. Runway with their fantastic videos, Sea Dream, and Tencent and Topaz, it goes on and on, Vio. So you, it's very easy to choose and you can also do searches to decide what you are going to start using. So overall, I think this is a really powerful way of getting started. And I think for a lot of people, it's gonna put an end to the fairly pointless arguments about whether it's gonna be running open weights, whether it's gonna be running on some remote server somewhere. I think the people who like to run it remote, they just want the convenience. They're hosted first. They are API first. They want service powered, cloud enabled creation. And these people just want convenience. They're, they're convenience connoisseurs. They don't want to spend time just tinkering around trying to get everything to work perfectly. Or they've just got used to a particular way of doing things and they want to run it inside of Comfy UI using a workflow 
that they manage. And for me, that's, that's really powerful. I use a lot of online services, but you can't design your own workflows on the website. Here you can. And I think that makes a lot of difference. You get to create your own images. You get to save all the images very easily. The people who are the VRAM Vikings, the VRAM v Vikings, they can benefit from complete control. They can have everything they want running locally. And currently, if we look at the partner nodes and count them, there are approximately, let's just see, 93 partner models. There are more in terms of the open weights models. And over time, I think we'll see the partner models probably increasing in number at a faster rate, simply because model sizes are getting so large that it's much easier to have them running in the cloud than to run locally. Let's take a look at what Comfy UI have said about the new template library. They've put an emphasis here on the ability to do creative ideas and real tasks, not just model experiments. So they're moving away from Comfy UI being something for tinkerers and trying to make it something more for creatives. And I've definitely noticed a trend, particularly online, for people who are hosting Comfy UI tutorials to be more on the technical side rather than the technical, the creative side, uh, as time has gone by, we've got some interesting video here. And of course, there is a new service called Comfy Cloud. This is something which has become available since Comfy UI uh, got a huge amount of investment coming in from different venture capitalists. The workflows are also open sourced and work in local Comfy UI. You can download them and drag them and drag them directly into your local setup. So there's a new feature whereby you can drag in an image, you can set things up and anything that's missing, boom, it will start to download. There's a whole new work way of working inside of Comfy UI. You have to try it to understand exactly how it works. A significant improvement from the previous GPT image, that's GPT image 1.5, now available via OpenAI GPT image node. And here we can see one potential use case where someone is creating a set of images in a contact sheet. So this is something which is going to be very valuable for creatives who need to create the kind of content that their customers and their clients re rely on. And some of the more powerful models allow you to do incredible stuff in terms of actually creating material that might be useful for marketing. Here, I think this model here, I'm not sure which one it is, but it's, I think it's chat GPT, uh, GPT image. It, yeah, GPT 5, <laughs> 1.5. So this one here is GPT 1.5, taking a single image and then turning it into different. This is pretty amazing. It's turning it into different profiles of the same person, different, different aspects. And I did a video about trying to do something like this a long time ago. It was nowhere near as impressive. And to be honest, I use this model quite a lot. I, I wasn't aware that it's capable of doing this type of thing. There's a video from Kling 2.6 and 1 2.6. So the very latest models are represented here. So there's a lot going on. And definitely this is something you can try. It's very, very, it looks very polished. And what Comfort UI is becoming is this more polished service which has got something for everyone so hopefully we will have an end to the to the technology war i think all the different factions do, do deserve a win and comfort ui i think is going to deliver